was also planning on spending some time in Chow Ying Village? Well. We didn't have anything else to do today, right? Why don't we go have a look around? Maybe we'll run into her. When they're too early, eh? <laughs> it seems. <laughs> oh wait, they're there. Whoa. So you're still a big fan of winter melon cake then? Huh? Oh, <laughs> I guess you heard everything Paimon was saying, huh? <laughs> <laughs> of course, she was talking about you. As your father, how could I not listen? Remember back when you were a kid, and you would sit on my shoulders to watch the Wuxiu dance. Oh. On our way back home, you would beg me to buy you some winter melon cake. We would only buy two at a time, but before long, we tried the winter melon cake from every vendor that street had to offer. There was also that one time you used your pocket money to treat me. Do you still remember? Yeah, I remember. Very sweet. That was the best winter melon cake I ever had. Let's go back sometime. The shop's still there and I remember the way. My treat, just like before. Are you sure? Absolutely. <laughs> That's fucking sweet. Fuck off, you guys. Okay, um, welcome back. Uh, th we're going to try out part four and go to Hu Tao. The mountain air is so refreshing. It makes Paimon feel like she can float around all day and never get tired. Hooray! Why is there a chest there? Huh? Did you hear that? Who wouldn't? It's annoying. Sunshine! Blue skies! Good vibes! Something about well fruits and good vibes. So Paimon wasn't just hearing things. Hmm, that voice sounds really familiar. Well, we've got the time. Why don't we go check it out? Yeah. If it's Huta, I'm not gonna be surprised. You and Paimon make your way up in the mountain in search of the source of Sauring. Uh, as far as you can make out, it's almonds, this, and co cocoa paste, that. Sounds delicious, that's for sure. A lively voice invigorates your steps, and you ascend the mountains in no time. Oh, what the fuck? What are they doing here? What the fuck? Okay, I was not expecting that. Navia, Wait, was Navia the one shouting? If it isn't my dear partners. See, I told you that something good was going to happen during our travels today. I have to say, sometimes the Steambird's astrology column is spot on. Don't believe those. It's just your lucky day. Are you guys also here to catch the festivities? Oh, and that reminds me. Happy Lantern Rite. Happy Lantern Rite. Happy Lantern Rite. The fuck you guys here? Happy I mean, it's not a dessert as you see, there's a lot of flowers, there's life. And that voice we heard, that was you, right Navia? Yeah, you're disrupting the locals so much. <laughs> oh, impressive. You could tell it was me from that far away. No, actually. You good ears. I thought, I thought it was a child. That or your voice is just really loud. Well, of course it is. After all, I'm a boss. Indeed. I suppose it's an asset. Hmm, yes. Uh, sets. Sure is! Having a loud voice is a handy tool when it comes to communication. Wait, 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 that wasn't even Paimon's point. Paimon just wants to know why you two were shouting from the top of this deserted mountain. There was something about almonds, maybe? And buell fruit? Ooh, is it some sort of secret code? No, it's not a code. The words are meaningless. Perhaps... But, the act of shouting was very meaningful indeed. That's just what mountain climbers do, right? After all the hard work it takes to make it to the top, as you stand on the summit looking out at the vast scenery, it's not easy to resist the urge to release those emotions. There are taller mountains. This is a hill. I see, so it's not that much as you were shouting. Okay. <laughs> exactly. You get me, partner. 
I was afraid that it would cause a disturbance, it so did. I asked the locals around here, and they said it was fine. Oh. Apparently, most hikers like to shout when they get to the top, so the locals are used to it by now. So, you see, it's not just me. I guess everyone shouts from the top of a mountain at some point in their life. Probably not me, though. Uh, speak for yourself. When you're stressed, don't you ever just get the urge to do something for no reason? Uh, yeah, I agree. I agree. Mm, not really. If I ever get stressed, I just go hunting. What are you hunting? Oh, that's a pretty good way to relieve stress. Yep, killing. I'd kill hilly turtles. Or sports. Hmm. What I choose to hunt depends on my mood. What? <laughs> huh? What? Um. <laughs> anyway, why don't you two give it a try? Shout anything you want. It's a real stress reliever. Hmm. As long as Paimon has clothes in her back and food in her belly, Paimon doesn't think there's any stress that needs relieving. And I prefer to keep things bottled up. Yeah. Oh, I bet you guys are just too embarrassed to let loose. No need to be shy. Even Farina was shouting from the top of this mountain earlier. What? She's here? Uh, did Paimon hear that right? Farina's also here? In Chaiyang Village? Believe in your ears. It is indeed as you heard. Actually, the reason we climbed this mountain in the first place was also because we heard the sound of shouting. Yes, we could just about make out someone yelling things like, Help me! And what should I do? So we hurried up here to check it out. <laughs> what the fuck? If, if she didn't know how to climb down, why did she clown up? What the fuck? What do you know? Miss Farina was standing right there, all red in the face. She practically sprinted back down the mountain the minute she saw us. Ah, uh, that reminds me. I believe what she actually said was, so help me, I will figure out what I should do about this script. Uh, so, you could actually hear what she was saying? Why didn't you say so earlier? I thought someone was really in trouble. I figured we would come check out the situation either way. Why not let her keep some privacy? Oh, seems like you caught Farina in the middle of some stress relief as well. Is Mr. Mechanique the Annelise Cardinal... Wait, what? What's the full name again? Mechanique the Mechanique the Analyst Cardinal. No, the Oratrice Mechanique the An the Analyst Cardinal is Mister Oratrice the Mechanique the Analyst Cardinal here. She probably would have never thought. No, she definitely would have never thought she would run into anyone she knew all the way out here. Was she alone? I think so. Uh, we ran into Nervalette on the way here as well, but. He was already on his way back, so they probably weren't together. Okay, you can't see my face, but I was confused. Why was Mr. Oratrice Mechanique the Annalise Cardinal here too? What? Nebula was here too? So many people from Fontaine, yep, yes. What was he doing here? It couldn't have been for vacation. Bro, if Linny and Lynette and uh, what's the name of the other brother again were here, I'd be shocked. If Arlequino was here, I'd be more shocked. I think it just might have been, actually. But apparently he only stayed for half a day before heading back. He's a very busy man. Hmm. Nevillette is not the type to take much time off. Taking even a half day for himself is already a huge step in the right direction. <laughs> Whoa. Didn't Charlotte publish an article on the Liyue tea industry recently? That's Maybe quick. he was inspired to come buy some tea after reading that article. You know, just like you were. My situation is completely different. I'm here because I was asked to accompany you. The tea purchase is simply an added bonus of this location. I hope you give some with Mr. Big Ass because he likes tea, right? You Fontanians in your tea drinking. Oh, it's not for me. I lost a bet with Ridesley, and now I have to buy him something. Getting gift. It was just a spur of the moment sort of bet. Ridesley gets really invested in that sort of thing, but he couldn't care less about what he wins in the end. You could give him mint plants that you plucked from the side of the road, and he wouldn't even mind. Uh, if only he was that easy going when it came to talking business. <laughs> in any case, I'm pretty sure the tea you bought is this region's specialty. What is it called again? Uh, Nervalette even <laughs> mentioned it earlier. <laughs> Buy ten boxes, get half off. Yes. Yes, that's the <laughs> what one. the fuck, bro? That that merchant is getting Lemundo of connections. 
<laughs> you didn't really buy ten boxes, did you? <sighs> Please. Do I look like someone who would fall for that sort of marketing trap? Oh no. <laughs> You're looking down upon Shen Yun. Uh, that reminds me. You guys said you only came up here because you heard my voice, right? I hope it didn't put you out. You must have had other plans for the day. Yeah. That's right, who tell? A few days ago, we heard that a friend was going to be in Chaoying Village. So we decided to come and see if we could run into her. Oh dear. We've been chatting for quite some time. I'm sorry for keeping you. Nah. <laughs> That's good. We should probably head out and look for Hu Tao. No yeah. need to stay on our account. We just got up here, so we're gonna stay around for a little longer. Hmm. Go and meet your friend. We can meet up in Chaoying Village later. Sounds sounds good. Sounds good. We're gonna head <laughs> down the mountain then. See you later. I feel so dumb when I guess what Paimon is going to say by accident. What do I have to do to get you to yell from the top of this mountain? Name your price. You really want to hear it that bad, huh? I'm just curious is all. I have a feeling you'll say something amazing. <sighs> I will pass. I prefer to let actions speak louder than words. Huh. Oh, what the fuck? Chaiyang Village is known for its tea. But you know what else they have with tea? Right. Dim sum. Dim sum. That's the name of the food I forgot. Didn't Gumming say something about dim sum being eaten in the morning? Oh, Paimon wonders if we can still get some at this time of day. Afternoon tea might be more appropriate. What the fuck? There's morning tea. There is there lunch tea also. Is there dessert tea? I yeah. There, there's probably there probably is. Is there a midnight tea? Jesus Christ. Now let's see what kind of yummy things we can find around here. Uh Paimon's not seeing things, is she? Is that Farino standing between Zhang Li and Hu Tao? Jotting based on the hat and say so. Wonder what they're talking about. Hmm, Zhang Li knows a lot of stuff. Maybe he's telling Farina about Chow Ying Village. Probably. Oh, or maybe Hu Tao is trying to rope Farina into being one of her clients. Yeah. Hey, this isn't the fortress of Meropede. What are you implying? What what are you implying? But Paimon could be convinced for the right price. Let's say loser buys the winner three huge bowls of seafood kanji. Yeah, and I don't think I can eat that much. Since Zhang Li is there, Paimon bets things are pretty tame. Don't. It's decided then. Then I'll vote Hustler Hu Tao. Alright, no time to waste! Let's go see who's right! It's scriptwriter Farina. What? Why are you looking at the water? Okay, I feel like Farina's going to shout. Oh great, now Paimon's shouting too. Oh, well aren't you a sight for sore eyes? Seems like our luck just keeps on growing. What does a sight for sore eyes mean? That we were able to meet you both without prior arrangement must mean that this is quite the serendipitous meeting indeed. Hmm, yes, yeah, serendipitous. Uh -huh. Oh, so both of you are acquainted with the Traveler and Paimon then? I have keenly felt the passage of time since our last meeting. So many chums all in one place. Should I sound more etiquette or should I sound like a southerner? <laughs> I'm pretty sure you didn't learn that one from me. Fuck. Um, I must admit, I am a bit surprised to see you here, Traveler. Why? But seeing as you're a hero who's been all over to that, it makes sense that you would be well-traveled and well-connected. Since we have found ourselves in each other's company within this fertile land, allow me to take this opportunity to wish you a happy lantern rite. Happy lantern rite, Farina. It appears you have been to Fontaine then. Given your proclivity to spread good deeds wherever you go, it's no surprise that you would make the acquaintance of a celebrity as illustrious and celebrated as Miss Farina. No, Farina's going to deny that. Uh, <laughs> Knew it. Quite high praise. What I mean to say is, you flatter me, Mr. Zhongli. 
Although I've built up a certain following within Fontaine, it is no reflection of strength or wisdom. I stand before you right now as nothing more than an ordinary traveler in search of beautiful scenery and creative inspiration. There is definitely more to Mr. Zhongli than meets the eye. I could tell as much from our conversation earlier. Given his breadth of knowledge on both academic and worldly matters, there's no way he hasn't heard about what happened in Fontaine. Is he just feigning ignorance for my benefit? Prob- yeah, No, not probably, for sure. No, 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 no. Ay yeah. You're no common tourist. I simply won't have you talk about yourself that way. Huh? Does that mean Hu Tao also knows? You may not have heard, friends, but... Uh, ahem, Miss Hu Tao. Miss Farina is now one of my esteemed clients. Won the bet, bitch. Uh, uh, uh. Yep. <laughs> wait. Huh. Oh, wait. The... Huh. I'm confused. Is this good for Hu Tao? I mean, all the people were turned to water, so I don't see how you put them in coffins. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> did you hear that? She's one of Hu Tao's esteemed clients. Won the bet. Okay, okay, you win. Hmm, guess Paimon will have to break into the hidden stash at the bottom of her shoe. What? Uh huh? What's this about winning something? We made a bet. Don't tell me. You two were placing bets on us. Paimon's fault. No, what do you mean, no? Uh. Oh, we just saw you guys standing on the side of the road and couldn't help but take guesses as to what you were talking about. Oh, I see. That means you, my friend, must have guessed that I was trying to promote my business to Miss Farina. You know me well. That I do, my friend. What was Paimon's guess then? Huh, tourist guide <laughs> Zhang Li. Li was showing the newbie around. Okay. Ah, by newbie, you mean me, right? If that's the case, then Paimon's guess was also correct. Uh, well... Oh, that's right. Mr. Zhongli was telling me about some great sightseeing spots in the area. Ha! You see? Paimon was right too! Fuck you. Since both of our guesses were right, there can't be a winner or a loser. Fine, fine, keep your secret stash. Then, then why did you spill your secret stash? Hey, don't be upset, Traveler. You were the one upset first, bitch. Okay, no three bowls. Uh, as for the third bowl... Give it to Farina, she seems hungry. Since I was the subject of the bet, perhaps it should go to me? You know, as a congratulations for the huge deal I just struck. Okay, no, the subject of the bet was mostly focused on Farina. So, fine. <laughs> I was just joking. Anyway... I should be the one treating you. The funeral parlor is about to bring in quite the sum, after all. Oh, Paimon almost forgot to ask about the most important question. Did I... something happen recently, Farina? Huh? What do you mean? Uh... Well, you know, with you enlisting the services of Wangsheng Funeral Parlor and all... Oh. oh, well, yes. Really? Oh, no. Paimon is so sorry for your loss. Although Paimon may have not known the person, please accept Paimon's deepest... Whoa, 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 it's not like that, Paimon. Fucking damn, expected a dead person. Huh? But Paimon just thought, since you hired the services of a funeral parlor and all... Hey, it's not that big of a stretch. Yeah, Paimon's not... Paimon's not wrong here. People would guess that. Really, Paimon? It's not like you don't know me. Do I look like I know anyone who would ask me to coordinate their funeral? I'd agree. Yeah, I'd agree. <laughs> Miss Hu Tao is simply helping prepare some props for my film. Not too long ago, I read a collection of horror stories from Liyue. The content was spectacular! In fact, I still feel the need to sleep with the light on even now. Uh, <laughs> anyway, that's not the point. Now that Fontaine's biggest star has returned to the stage, Aww. I figured it's about time the industry enjoyed a breath of fresh air. That actually makes me happy, dude. Farina is actually uh, coming back to the stage and 
and slowly but surely healing from her trauma, which almost killing everyone in Fontaine and every Fontanian. Uh, you must, you might even call it a breath of fresh tear, t air or. Oh, terror! Hey, <laughs> that's pretty good. I'll have to remember that for my ad posters. No, it's a weird dad joke. There's a lot of dad jokes here. So, did you come to Liyue just to enlist the services of Wangsheng Funeral Parlor? Well, not exactly. My original plan was to just relax and enjoy the sights. But then I ran into Miss Hu Tao and Mr. Zhang Li and, well, you know the rest. I suppose it was meant to be. It was a fated meeting indeed. Zhang Li sure loves his lofty turns of phrase. But if you ask me, it's all thanks to that man who stopped to ask for directions. Oh? Who was it? Who? It's someone you know. Wanna take a guess? What? It's Nervilet? What? How did you guess that on your first try? What the fuck? Very impressive, my friend. Your guessing game is spot on today. Wait, dragon met dragon. What happened? You tell everything about your encounter with Navia and Clorin at the top of the mountain. One look at the pitiful expression of Rina's face is enough to convince you to leave out the part about the shouting. Huh. Paimon never thought Nervalette would be the type to get lost. What? He got lost? I'm sure he didn't get lost. <laughs> Even I was able to find my way to this place without any trouble. I mean, I'm considered as some sort of an intellectual, but I have terrible direction, so you're basing it off of him being an intellectual. And his sense of direction being also intellectual, so you're being wrong right now. He was already getting ready to leave by the time I arrived. He just wanted to ask someone about the quickest way to get back to Fontaine. Yup, that's exactly what he asked. This area is full of mountains and rivers. It's normal to not know the fastest route. For him though, swimming was probably the fastest Yeah. <laughs> so, were you the one that pointed him in the right direction, Hotel? Of course. I'm also a guide of sorts, you know? Yeah. So naturally, I also have a great sense of direction. You're a guide for dead people. But, speaking of your friend... What about him? He doesn't get out much, does he? No. Ah, uh, no wonder. He was stiff as a board and way too polite. I would have never guessed he was here on vacation if you hadn't told me. All in all, he was only here for half a day. I'm pretty sure he is the only one who would consider that to be a vacation. Oh? This gentleman you speak of must keep a demanding schedule. Zhang Li, you know him. I'm sure he does. You didn't see him, but he was dressed like he was about to attend some important meeting. It wasn't anything like what someone would wear on vacation. Is that so? Is that so? Hmm. Wait, you didn't see him, Zhang Li? Unfortunately, no. At the time, it appeared as if Director Hu and Miss Farina were having quite the productive conversation. I know matters of business can take much discussion, so I decided to fetch some tea for them. What a shame. That gentleman seemed like a sophisticated sort of guy. I actually think you two would have hit it off. No. <laughs> He's Is smiling. So? Fuck you. You would not. You would not. Judging by how Zhang Li is acting and taking into consideration Nervalet's true identity, could Zhang Li have been avoiding him on purpose? Fucking. Why? Hmm? Why? <laughs> I see. Oh, I see. It is. What is a pity? <laughs> to borrow Miss Farina's turn of phrase, perhaps it just wasn't meant to be. Bro, you made it not meant to be. Well, with the traveler around, I'm sure you'll have a chance to get to know each other at some point. That's right. She's got more friends than she knows what to do with. I have a certain charm about me. Yeah, I'm. My my charisma stats are through the roof. Well, that's certainly true. Oh, that reminds me. If you get the chance, you should try and talk to Nervalette into loosening up a bit. Just tell him the Palais Marmonia isn't going to fall apart if he disappears for a few days. <laughs> he shouldn't keep himself cooped up all the time. Even clams open their shells to let in fresh water every once in a while, right? 
I did not know that. No. If he's really that much of a stickler for protocol, he can fill out a leave of absence request. He'd uh, have to approve it himself since he handles that sort of thing now, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Makes sense. Seems like this gentleman is also in charge of something pretty important. Should we tell Hu Tao? He's the fair and important Eudex of Fontaine, the head of the highest court in land, otherwise known as the demon who controls all the paperwork. <laughs> never heard of a demon that boring before. <laughs> In my experience, a leader needs to be able to roll with the punches. That also includes knowing when and what to prioritize. It seems like your friend still has a lot of growing to do. If I remember correctly, he's already several thousands of years old. Yeah. Uh, you're quite right, Miss Hu Tao. Oh, what the fuck? Oh? Traveler, Miss Farina. Those two individuals over there appear to recognize you. Oh, it's Navia and Cloran! Hey, over here! It's your Geodad. We saw you all chatting over here, and we're wondering if we could join in. <clears throat> um, please, excuse the interruption. Oh, fuck. Okay, um... Utao? Don't try and be a businesswoman right here, right now, please. <laughs> so polite. No apologies necessary. Any friend of the Traveler and Miss Farina is a friend of mine. Ah, <laughs> straight to the point. I like it. Everyone circles around you and begins to introduce themselves. Utao's eyes are up when she hears about Clorenz's profession. But a quick explanation for Freena and Navia seems to dispel some sort of, some of her more misguided ideas. Yeah, she kills, right? She has duels. Hmm, it's getting late. Wait. Yeah. Whoa, what the fuck? Huh. There are times where Hu Tao should stop being a businesswoman in a certain conversation. If we want to catch a boat back before dark, we should probably get going. Indeed. Then, Miss Farina. Oh, uh, uh, yes? When are you planning to head back? Do you need us to escort you? Oh, um, I, I don't think that will be necessary. I mean, you're not my subordinate anymore. You don't need to look after me. I mean, they're not going to look after you like a subordinate and a boss. They're going to look after you like a friend, dude. Um, I didn't mean it that way. It's normal for friends to travel home together if they run into each other on the road. Mm, there are a lot of mountainous roads in this area. I imagine they'll be even harder to navigate after dark. Exactly! Just like in those ghost stories. Okay, Huta, you're pushing it. Eight paths converge in a wood. Beside them an old house is stood. If you dare to go inside, not a soul will greet your eye. But if you take a closer look, there may be something you mistook. A candle flickers to and fro, yet there is no wind to make it so. What is its secret? What could it mean? In this wood, where mystery screams. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. My dear Demoiselle, the, the ladies, no, uh, I mean friends, please take me with you. <laughs> of course. Farina, that's sad. <laughs> Gotta say, Farina, you are really quite the character. By the way, did I hear you mention that Clorand used to work under you? Then you must have also been a leader at some point. Uh, well, that's... Ooh, uh, no, don't bring it up. Stop, Hutao. Stop digging. Besides, being a leader is hard. It wasn't the right job for me. I prefer how things are now. I can come and go as I please, and get to enjoy the sweet taste of freedom. Hutao should shut the fuck up once in a while. I mean, don't get me wrong. I like Hu Tao, I like her character, I like her design, but there should be times she should shut the fuck up. <laughs> I see. Well, you've certainly picked an apt place to relax. Chaoying Village is an exemplary choice. Well, have you all had a good time? Only the best. 
And I've learned a lot, too. Thank you so much, Miss Hu Tao and Mr. Zhongli. It's fine. You've thanked us more than enough already. The next time you're in this neck of the woods, I'll treat you to some dim sum in the city. Dim sum? Is that some kind of liyue term for snacks or desserts? They are a part of it. It's basically a table full of as much tea, sweets, and good company as you can manage. Oh, so it's basically a tea party. <laughs> Sounds great. Make sure to order the winter melon cake and the lotus flower crisp. They're so sweet and delicious. Paimon knows you'll love them. I mean, yeah, yeah. Brina has a sweet tooth. Ooh, okay. <laughs> I'll be looking forward to it then. Wait, but didn't you guys say you were here on vacation? How come you're all going home empty-handed? You're not bringing home any souvenirs. Of course I am. I bought tons of fun things to bring home with me. Okay, where is it? A kite, a parasol, a little tin frog that jumps. Oh, and a stuffed toy of a mythical beast. Chlorand is the one who didn't buy anything for herself. So all you're bringing back with you is that tea? And some tea-flavored hard candies. They're for Sijuin. Bro. Chlorand isn't much of a shopaholic. Well, one of us has to practice restraint. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> hey, I'm hardly reckless with my Mora. I'll have you know, all the purchases I made today were well within my budget. How about you, Farina? Me? Oh, well, I bought some tea, of course. I just had to try all the varieties recommended in the Steambird. Other than that, just some bits and bobs, you know. I don't. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. I don't know. They should all be things I can use, I think. Um, so you're not good, I see. So you fell for a few <laughs> marketing traps. <laughs> I feel bad for you. Uh, now Paimon's even more confused. If you bought that much stuff, where did it all go? Into one of Linny's magic packets? Oh, <laughs> actually... N oh, no shot. Monsieur Neuvillette took them with him. Oh, what? Really? Oh, so that's what happened. Wait, what? Why did he take them? Oh, he's not... Hoarding treasure, is he? Okay, no, that's just a stereotype for dragons. You're being specious. <laughs> that's quite the imagination you've got there, Paimon. Monsieur Nervillet just saw the amount of bags we had and offered to take them back for us. I felt a bit bad at first, but, uh, I really did have a lot of stuff. <laughs> he even offered to deliver my gifts to the Fortress of Meripede for me once he's done with the day's work. Dog, what are you doing? Novelette is a man of his word. If he says he can do something, then he means it. See, even Clorand was happy to take him up on his offer. If even his trusty subordinate agreed, then who was I to refuse? Wow, he seems like a real gentleman. Maybe he's not as uptight as I thought. If only the funeral parlor had an employee as thoughtful, proactive, and responsible as him. Hmm, would Zhongli like that though? Right, Zhongli? Fuck, he, she's on to something. Indeed. Bro, Hu Tao is on to something. She has an idea that Zhongli is Rex Lapis. Or Morax. Loran said Nervalet offered to deliver her gifts to Risley. So if we go to the entrance of the Fortress of Meripede, maybe we'll run into Nervalet! Agreed. But... Fuck, oh, oh shit, I thought it was me. done. A new year of work is about to begin. If there's anything you want to talk about, Zhongli, you know you can come to me. I'm all ears. Does the director have any concerns? It just seemed like you were a bit preoccupied today, and much less talkative than usual. He barely said anything other than, Is that so? And, Indeed. If you ask me, I'd say you're having a midlife crisis. You're getting to be around that age, after all. Damn, you're, you're insulting him so much. Is that so? Oh, fuck. Oh, my god. <laughs> I jest. Given its distance from the city, Chaoying Village enjoys a much slower pace of life. Surrounded by such peace and tranquility, I also seem to have developed a proclivity for inactivity. I apologize for making you worry. What do you think, Traveler? 
Is this atmosphere putting you in a lazy mood too? Out of mind, out of sight. Let's go, bitch. Wow, you are getting really good at these kinds of lines. Indeed. Come on. <laughs> How about you three? Well, everyone, make sure that you've got all your belongings with you before we leave. If there's any souvenirs anyone still wants to buy, the time is now. Reliable as ever, Miss President. <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? Gloriand is right, though. You really are reliable. It's not what she's saying. It's the way she's saying it. I will say, but I never thought you'd be so easygoing outside of work, Gloriand. The tone of voice you use when you're working doesn't exactly make you seem like the type who enjoys interacting with people. Isn't that like most teachers? Well, I try to keep my professional and private life separate. That includes my behavior. You take care now, Traveler. Paimon. Don't, don't worry, your partner is very strong, yup. Ah, trying to act cool now, are we? <laughs> well, I guess it's not an act for you, is it? You are indeed quite strong. <laughs> it's been great talking to you all. I'm really glad I decided to come to Chaoying Village. Maybe we could go on another trip together sometime? That's cute. Okay, we're going to go look for Nervalette. Oh, fuck, okay. Look! It's Nervalette! We left out! Oh, it's you. It has been some time since our last meeting. Very much. Few people frequent this location. Since I was able to conclude my work early for the day, I thought I might take a walk and avail myself of this area's peace and quiet. You call this early? Do you always work this late, Nevelet? Strictly speaking, that depends on the agenda for the day. I am hardly bereft of time, however, so working late is of little consequence to me. Really? If you have so much time on your hands, then why did you only go to Chaoying Village for half a day? Hmm? First, I should clarify that I was referring to my lifespan, oh. rather than the time at my disposal on any given day. <laughs> Second, I was unaware you possessed knowledge of my trip to Chaoying Village. I mean, we went there too. You give Nivellet a quick summary of everything that happened today. Thank you for informing me. But did you deliver the gifts? Yes, they have been safely delivered. <laughs> I have to hand it to Cloran. Just a simple gift delivery, and she has the great and mighty Udex at her beck and call. I was just passing through. It was merely an act of convenience. All right. Then I hereby confirm receipt of the goods on behalf of the staff of the Fortress of Meripede. A verbal receipt of confirmation? Is such a formality really necessary for a small matter such as this? No. Guess not. This quantity of tea, though, seems a little excessive for a gift, don't you think? Before you know it, they'll start accusing me of taking bribes. Ah, about that. Much of that is my own excess, I'm afraid. Oh? Why? What happened? It was buy ten boxes, get half off. Bye. <laughs> ah, that explains it then. Well, go ahead and leave them to me. I'll get through this stash as fast as I can. Jesus Christ, he got scammed. You have my thanks. Bro, if Nevelet learns that he was struck by a marketing ploy, bro, I don't know how he's going to feel about that. Oh, there's something else I'd like to give to you. This is a stone slate, engraved with a symbolic design. Well, that is an apt description. It is, in actuality, a legal codex. A legal codex, huh? Hmm. What's a legal codex? Before the advent of modern writing utensils, information was recorded on stone slabs such as this. The law was no different. Oh... Okay. <laughs> Honestly, my same reaction. Since ancient times, the scales of justice have symbolized the fairness and impartiality of judiciousness. As a tribute to that sentiment, this slate was designed after a traditional legal codex and engraved with a symbol instead of text. During my travels recently, I chanced upon a roadside stall offering tourists the opportunity to try their hand at the ceramic arts. 
So I decided to have a go. We joked with Cloran some time ago about gifting you a legal codex. So, here you go. Ah, so that's what this is about. I did not expect you to remember it as well. In any case, I hope this can be considered as a reasonable attempt to join in on the banter. It is a very good attempt. I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. Even your sense of humor centers around the law. It's Damn. It's an impressive level of commitment. <laughs> okay, that's... I don't know how to interpret that. Is that supposed to be an insult or a compliment? Well, a gift of this significance deserves to be put on display, and I know just the place. Front and center in the fortress's showroom. Ah, oh, surely there's no need for such a grand gesture. <laughs> Nervalette is shy. Just kidding. I don't have anything like a showroom. But we do have a storage room. We can put it next to all the mechanical parts Sijuin has collected. That sounds good to me. Wait, that's good so enough? That's what you were doing in Chaoying Village. Indeed. Of course, while I was there, I also took the opportunity to taste the local spring water. <laughs> Bro, someone pissed in there. <laughs> the aftertaste is much purer than what I have delivered to me in Fontaine. It stands to reason that the long-distance transport has a tendency to imbue the water with extraneous emotion. Wait, are you saying that you just poured the cup in the, in the spring water and just drank it? If you want to experience the true flavor, you simply have to go to the source. Perhaps I should organize some time off to do the same elsewhere. Yeah, as they say in Liyue, a balance be, be, as they say in Liyue, a balance between work and play is sure to keep your troubles at bay. Bro, that's like saying an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Then we are of the same mind. It appears my desire is justified. If you say so, like, you know you don't have to justify a vacation, right? You can just take one. After all, you're hardly bereft of time. What you the can fuck? do whatever you want. You, you are mocking him. You're quite right. I suppose I suffer not from a lack of opportunity, but rather a lack of inspiration. However, after reading a few articles about Li Wei's holiday traditions, the idea popped into my head and made itself quite at home. Seeing as I was free of responsibilities for the morning, I decided to depart at once. And how was it? Refreshing. My spontaneous outing seemed to inspire quite a few other spontaneous decisions as well. Which is? Take, for example, my foray into ceramics. At first, soil from the ground is granular and unforgiving, but had the right amount of water, and it becomes soft, moldable, and able to take shape. You just learned of that now and you've lived for a thousand years? In the past, I never thought about how quotidian vessels were crafted. But now, I have participated in their very making. This is also something I made today. What the fuck is that? <laughs> oh wow, what a big ladle. <laughs> That was indeed one of my inspirations. Amazing. <laughs> the color also really matches your style. Yeah, it does. Really? You like it? Bro, it's going to... What's the opposite of fucking rainy, bro? He's going to jump around and be happy. To tell you the truth, given your unexpected arrival, I find myself quite unequipped to give you the welcome you deserve. Around such an important holiday such as this, Human custom would dictate that gifts should be in order, but I'm afraid this is all I can offer. If you'll have it, that is. Bro, you made it by hand and everything, dude. That is precisely why it would do me such a great honor if you accepted. Bro, then I accept. Then what should I give you? You are most welcome. Happy Lantern Rite. Happy Lantern Rite and... Oh, that reminds me. Are you passing on the advice for Nuvelet's vacation? Hmm. Approve a leave of absence request for myself. That sounds like it could easily lead to a vicious cycle of self-indulgence, something which couldn't be in further violation of protocol. But I suppose I understand her point. My proclivity to refrain from personal outings does in part originate from a sense of responsibility toward my duties. But it is also due to a lack of desire to engage in the human world. But now I see that the human world is indeed full of many interesting places to discover. I could have told you that? What? Huh, wait, so is it done now? 
Oh no, why is she dying? Lantern Rite marks the start of the new year in Liyue. In the spirit of the season then, I wish you a year of success as vast and endless as the open ocean. Thank you. Okay, where should we go? Back in Shaying Village. What what are we supposed to find here? Okay, okay, I think, yeah, part, is part 4 done now? Okay, part 4 is done. But why the fuck didn't it say part 4 done? Okay, I was confused now. Okay, thank you for watching. This was such an excellent uh, Lantern Rite. Honestly, one of my favorites so far. The best out of the three or four we've seen. I honestly don't know or remember the real number. But yeah, this has been super fun. I still don't know how to get this gem off this turtle. Yeah, how do you do that? Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and see you guys later in the next video. Bye nerds!